Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. We are talking about a new rhythm and discipline we have implemented in our home that I wish we would have done years ago. And I love gleaning into the wisdom of women who are older than me, who are more matured mothers and seeing the rhythms that they have established in their homes. And my husband and I are very prayerful about what we bring into our home and doing it rhythms is something that my husband has been wanting to do and we have started doing them and the fruit and the blessing and the beauty that we have seen from this simple little thing that we spend five to 10 minutes doing, it sometimes ends up being 15, but this little thing that we have started doing has been such a beautiful gift. And so I thought I would walk you guys through what this is. I posted about it on my stories and I got so many questions about it and I felt like this whole idea needed an entire video, not just a couple of sides on Instagram. So I'm really excited about this. Um, if you look at all throughout scripture, through way back when God created Adam and Eve, how he gave and had structure and order. And then that theme is carried all throughout scripture. Our God is not a God of confusion. He is a God of order. He is a God of structure. He is a God of discipline, of all these beautiful attributes. And when you look at scripture, if you think about how God does things, the way that our family life looks and the way that our household runs should be a reflection of our Heavenly Father. Um, and so that is something that my husband and I are always asking ourselves this question of like, how can we make our home feel like a slice of heaven? And while yes, we are in a sinful world and truly uh, this earth will never quite feel like heaven does, what ways can we emulate what God has done and said and currently actively does that we can take into our home? And so that is kind of the idea of starting these Monday meetings. The goal of them is to establish structure, order, soundness, um, not confusion. And if you have littles, you know that probably one of the most frustrating things you can do to your children is not give them um, rules and not give them boundaries to follow by. Children love and need boundaries. They love and need to know what is expected of them, what is acceptable, what is unacceptable, what will happen if this happens. And knowing that what you say will be true, letting your yes mean yes and you know mean no. And so when we started the idea and how we structured it, um, is that we do it every Monday. The reason we do it on Mondays is because my husband and I have our own meeting that we do together on Sunday. And so for our family, it made sense for us to do it on Monday because then on Sunday, my husband and I would have already discussed anything that him and I want to discuss and we would have already spent some time um, chewing on the things and topics we might want to talk about on our Monday meeting. So maybe for you, your husband has to leave really early on Mondays. So maybe Mondays don't work. Maybe Sundays work for that, or maybe Fridays. Um, the beauty of having your own home is that you are able to cater this and make it work for your home. I'm just giving some ideas and explaining the meaning and reasoning behind these things. So hopefully that helps and is a little springboard for you and your family if you choose to do something similar. So establishing a day and sticking to that day, same with the time. And the biggest thing, because we do have littles, so our oldest is five and then we have five, four, two, and six month old. And so they are very little, but I do wish we would have started this years ago because I've noticed that even our toddler has been very accustomed to it already and is already able to sit through, is already able to digest these things and it's been really beautiful. So don't feel like you have to have 10 year olds to do this because our oldest is five. And so you can establish order and set up these rhythms because I find that it will be actually easier if they're already accustomed to doing this versus randomly starting this out of nowhere and they've never done anything like this and it's all new. So do expect a little bit of pushback. Do expect them to like moan and groan, but remind them to have a cheerful heart. Remind them that we have so much to be grateful for. Use those moans and groans as an opportunity to steward them and bring them back to God's word. So 
We do it on Monday mornings. We let the kids know that. They see it in the calendar. They're excited about it. And we kind of make a whole thing out of it. So when I was prepping and getting things ready, I asked them to grab their favorite drink. Um, we had just had breakfast, so we weren't doing like a snack at that time. But again, just making it exciting. Um, we start by singing hymns together, um, doing some piano time, whatever my husband feels like is necessary for us to. And we always start with a prayer as well. And then once we start, it is basically us establishing what we are expectant of our children that week. And as we've slowly started to do this at first, it was, we called it like a family meeting, but I noticed that we were only addressing our children. And I was like, well, you know, maybe that's not right. Maybe we should be addressing ourselves too. And so the two main things that we do right now is praise and pray. And this is something that I'm really seeing the fruit of. This is something I've already done in our home. I usually start off my morning like when we're all eating breakfast. I will just quickly pop around the kids, sit down with them for a second, and for not even 30 minutes, encourage them. And ask and pray and praise them for what they did really well the day before and then quickly pray with them over something that we could really use some um, wisdom in or some encouragement or just some simple correcting in and so um, this is something I've already been doing but I think just doing it as a family and all of us hearing it together all of us being together then like seeing the whiteboard up there like this whole thing around it makes it feel more official therefore more um, exciting and I don't know it's been really cool so my husband was getting things prepared um, I was just singing hymns with the kids and then one thing that I like to do again is to make things simpler so we don't all sit down until it's absolutely time for us to do it I have noticed there have been some other times where I had some kids sitting down we were still waiting for my husband to finish a couple of things and I noticed that that was a little bit more difficult because as we started to approach the 15 minute marker, because sometimes we do a little go a little bit over, I started to notice that we were losing some of the kids. And so try to be strategic about planning this. And so I don't ask anyone to like come over and sit down until I know we're about to start and get with it. And so um, my toddler, I did get her, her KiwiCo box out. Um, this is something that she really enjoys and I noticed that her in specific, she's able to sit there, but I noticed she does like to fidget and so I do like to give her one little toy that she's able to play with and be with, but I'm still expectant of her to sit there with us um, and that worked really well. So KiwiCo is sponsoring this portion of today's video. KiwiCo just released KiwiCo clubs, which is super cute. So they have five different clubs for kids of all ages and interest. And the programs that they do are guide kids on a journey to learning. So you'll able to watch your kid learn new skills and knowledge and building up with every project that they'll naturally be really curious and build some resistance along the way. And everything is very hands-on and it's just really cool. So the kids get to dive in and these activities, not only are they super fun, but built to last, but they offer endless play and different ways to play. And I noticed my kids did this. So what I did was with my toddler, I let her have her box and one of the things in her box while we were doing our Monday meeting. But then my goal and reward for my older kids was that they would get to open and explore their KiwiCo box. And um, they were really excited because they got a camping thing with it and they got to build a camping tent and then the other box was a racket and already I saw my kids within five minutes of playing it they were using it what it was intended for but really easily they were able to start launching and rocketing different things around the room and it was really cool to see and I was like wow you guys are like little engineers already in the making it was really sweet a lot of the things I save for homeschool and so it's really nice to just have this in my back pocket I supplement with it with homeschool too so it is just a really cool thing for moms to have, especially if you homeschool. I think you and your kids will really love KiwiCo. So I am going to leave a link in my code, which is Malena, for you to get 50% off your first club crate when you join a club for kids ages three or up. So go to kiwico.com slash Malena and you can get 50% off your first club crate when you join. And I'm really excited about them. So what I was doing beforehand as my husband was prepping things is I was grabbing my kids' Bibles. We have so many different Bibles. So I was just grabbing the ones that I feel like my kids go to and gravitate to the most. 
And then I grabbed a little activity for my daughter that she was playing with um, that came in her KiwiCo box. And then for my older two, they were able to play with theirs once we were done. So again, try to sandwich in and make it a fun activity. Like before we start, like you can grab a really fun drink and you can make a hot chocolate and you can put some marshmallows on it if you want. And after, once we're done, we're gonna go out to a park and we're gonna do this. Like just try to make it this really exciting thing, especially because our kids are really young. We want this to be an experience and a core memory for them and not a trauma memory and something that they were forced to do and that they hated it and it was every Monday. Like that's not what we're trying it to be and so we've just been praying and asking the Lord to give us wisdom in ways that we can let this be a blessing for our kids and not a burden so once we start my husband always starts off with a prayer and just asking the Lord to guide us give us wisdom and for this entire meeting to bring glory to the Lord and then um we start off with our praise. So we go through a line and we use a plain old whiteboard. My husband is a big whiteboard guy. He loves whiteboards. You can do this anywhere that you desire, but we already have that, so we're using what we have. You can totally also do it on, um, I have, I used to have one of these, um, the butcher paper things that are just like on a roll that you can just pull and rewrite. So you can totally do it on something like that as well. Whatever makes sense for you. Because we do a whiteboard, we do have to erase it. And so I do have pictures of it and I save it so I remember what we talked about. So as the week goes by, it's not like, oh yeah, we talked about it on Monday. We just left it on Monday because it already got erased. I do take pictures of it and I do save it in an album um, that I can reference what we do. So we choose to start with praise. So we literally just go down the line of every single family member. We start with the oldest and move all the way to the youngest. And we include our six month old on that board because he is part of our family. And the things that we write for him obviously are not as big, but I do think it is beautiful to start with these disciplines. So we'll start with my husband and we will just praise him for what we think he did really well at or something that we noticed he was just really well at and how the Lord worked in him and praise him for that. And we go through every single person and then we move on to the next category, which is pray. And this is something that we are going to be praying for this week for that person. So um, for example, um, if you have a child that is having a hard time telling the truth, you can pray that the Lord um, help them have lips that speak truth and truth only. And so little tiny things, it does not need to be a paragraph. When we write it down, we just write a word, maybe two, it's just really quick, something that they can remember and know that they're working on this. And when I tell you the fruit that we have seen in this is insane. I don't know if it's because we're writing it down. I don't know if it's because we're all together and we ask the siblings to encourage each other in wisdom, encourage each other to walk in the ways that the Lord has asked them to go. And so it's really cool. Not that there's this like peer pressure, but there is this, um, there is this little bit of seeing other, just having accountability, I think is a good word. The accountability of it um, and maybe just the seriousness of this meeting being held together makes it feel different than if it was just me instructing them on a normal Tuesday, like during the day or something. I'm not sure, but I have noticed that there are two particular things that we have been working on one of our kids with um, that we noticed within that week. They were overcoming and it was really cool it was really really cool it just made me so excited and so um we do praise and then we pray and then after that my husband as we are praying for the child or what we're praying for my husband will lay hands on their head and him and i will both pray over that child now we spend probably one to two minutes on each child nothing super long we would love for this meeting to be under 10 minutes sometimes it goes to 15 um, depending on how many interruptions we might have or things we need to correct but our goal is to always keep this as a very efficient and effective meeting we do not want to be wasting time we don't want to get lost in the boredom of it and as our kids do get older we do plan on incorporating more but once we are done with our prey and our praise, we move on to chores. So our kids do have chores that they are responsible for and we dash, like we give out those chores on a weekly basis. And so um, I just ordered on Amazon. I've tried many chore methods and different things and they've all failed me and I've not been as impressed with them and I've just had to switch them again because 
our fridge is not magnetic and so we're having to come up with a whole nother system because all the systems I had previously needed a magnetic board which we don't have as a fridge anymore and I don't feel like spending money on a magnetic board and so I found one on Amazon that I really like it's supposed to come in um, tomorrow so I will keep you guys updated on Instagram but for now, we've just been telling them, like, your chore this week is the dishwasher or your chore is to collect the laundry. And so at this point is when we tell them that and then that is your chore for the entire week. Um, but at this point, if we did have the boards that I ordered, that is when we would put them on the boards and make it so they can visually see what is expected of them. And then we finish off with a prayer. And it is such a blessing. I take a picture of that thing and then throughout the rest of the week, we are constantly reminding and, oh, oh, sorry, we're not done. We also have a verse that we memorize together. This is probably the most important part because I think memorizing scripture as a family is really beautiful and giving yourself an entire week to memorize scripture will really make sure it is, set, it is hidden in your heart. And I think often we underestimate the ability of our kids' memorization, but it's like, man, how many songs do our kids have memorized? How many... Um, character names do they have memorized? How many books do they know like the back of their hand? How many things do our two and three year olds already have memorized and know? So I want to encourage you to think like they can and totally can memorize scripture. And so um, my husband will put up the memory verse for that week. We'll say it together. And then I like to make a song out of it. And you would be surprised as to how well a kid can memorize a verse when it has a like tune to it and so you can get creative with this and then that ends up being the verse that our kids practice and practice writing during homeschool for um their handwriting and we just end up incorporating that verse and it becomes like the theme throughout the entire day um, and then the following meeting we say the verse that was last week's verse to make sure that we have it memorized um and then I say for us, like that's when we start to notice we're getting really wiggly and squiggly and the kids just want to run. And so at that point, that is when we end. But I do have a couple of things that I want to encourage you to possibly do that we would love to do as our kids get older. Um, one being reading a scripture of passage together and then asking questions about it and um, having a conversation and kind of like mid rashing it out and seeing what this verse does this verse connect to any other verses just kind of having our own little bible study together and then we would also love to be able to talk about anything that is currently happening in the world in the family with our schedules um, and just kind of lay things out the whole point of this meeting is to gear our heart to fix our minds on the lord and let him be the focus of our family but then also an intentional time to get those little things out of the way and to make sure like, hey, don't forget you have soccer this Tuesday or um, don't forget we won't be able to see so-and-so this weekend. We, I have Bible study and dad has this later so he won't be here for dinner. Like just those little tiny heads up that make, that could just really prevent a lot of confusion and possible tantrums later down the line. Just giving the kids a heads up. I feel like they really appreciate that and to them, ow, why are you biting my ear? <laughs> and to them, it feels um, like they're included and part of the family because they are. And so this is just one of the many ways that I feel like we try to run our household like a business, like a soccer team, which I've done I think one or two videos on before, so I will link that down below. Um, I'm also going to link a podcast that my husband and I did talking about finding the mission statement for your family. This is a really, really good starting point because I think that would really help determine to you and your family based on your mission statement what your meetings will look like because for you if generosity and extreme generosity is something that is a priority on your list then what you can do during your Monday meetings is establish during that week a way that you can be generous to people and carve that time in um and so I just think it's just a really great time um as our kids also get a little bit older I would love to start incorporating a way for us to um get into more of a rhythm of repentance about things usually that's something that we do right on the spot of something but I also would love to allow this 
meeting to be an opportunity for our kids to express something that might be bothering us, them, or express something that provoked them or something that they felt like could be changed. I think it's like an open mic opportunity and I think if we allow and come have our guards off and are just vulnerable in that moment, I think and I pray that this meetings that we're establishing as they're two, four, and five years old and six month olds, that they will start to really implement that in their lives and they'll start to see like, oh, you know, there's something I wanted to talk to mom and dad about. I'll bring it up on Monday's meeting. Like, I think it's just really cool to see. And so I think this is just the beginning of our meetings. I can't wait to see what comes of it. If this is something your family does, please leave it down below. Let us know one of your favorite things that you guys do as a family, what that looks like for you. Um, and if you've never tried anything like this, I really want to encourage you to because it is just really beautiful. If you fix your eyes on Jesus and steward the gifts that he's given you and um, live a life that you desire to bring glory to him in every little thing, you will just really see the fruit of it and he will just be so glorified by it. So um, I'm going to leave the KiwiCo link down below again if you want to get 50% off your first month of the KiwiCo Club. I love you guys. Be blessed and I will see you in my next video. Bye.